Hey everybody, it's Kevin DeWalt of ProLego. I'm coming to you from my home of a beautiful downtown Savannah, Georgia. I'm hanging out here on a beautiful day in Monterey Square and you can see right behind me there's the Mercer House, which you may have seen in the movie uh, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil with um, Kevin Spacey. Uh, so today I'm going to do a quick video to talk about what the, I guess the, the, the meme you might be hearing about the impact of AI on software engineers. And you may hear something discussed in the media about how AI is you know, automating software engineering and therefore we're not going to need any more programmers. And I just thought I would share my uh, opinions on this topic and I've got some fairly strong ones. So I've been hearing this since I started my career 30 years ago that there's a new technology, a new approach that's going to make software easy and cheap to build and therefore we're not going to need programmers anymore or we're not going to need as many. And this comes up I don't know, every five years or so. In the 1990s, we had these code automation tools, and then we were going to outsource everything to India, and then we had these application frameworks like Django and Rails, and everything was going to get easy. And inevitably, the same thing happens every time, um, uh, and that is we just need more programmers. And here's why. To believe that we're no longer going to need programmers or we're going to need fewer software engineers relies on the assumption that we already have enough software, right? And indeed, if we had enough software and we had enough software production capacity, then we could find ways of automating it, making it cheaper and easier, and we would need fewer software engineers. But that's not the state of the world. We, are, we have a dramatic shortage of software and we always will. So whether you believe you know, Mark Andreessen's theory that software is eating the world, or you just spend any time looking at any you know, business that I've ever worked in, there's not enough software. So if it's a small business, they're trying to do things manually or, or cobbling together tools. They don't build customized software systems for their applications. And if you've been a part of any large enterprise, you'll find that they have a dramatic sh shortage of all the tools and software they need to do automation. So in every case, people end up cobbling together you know, software components, SaaS services, or you know, other you know, basic software functions to try to get the job done, but it's not optimal. So let me give you an obvious example. Any business that could build its own CRM software, customer relationship management, would absolutely love to do it because it's such a critical function of any business. Uh, but building a CRM function, right, a CRM software right now, is expensive and hard. So in the end, what does everybody do? Everybody buys self, Salesforce and they try to customize it to their own purposes. If you've ever worked with Salesforce, you will agree with me that it is mostly a big, bloated, complicated mess. Companies don't want to use Salesforce. They use it because they don't have a better alternative. But just imagine for a second that with these new powerful software development tools, every business could hire one or two software engineers and build a custom high-performing customer relationship application that's optimized for their sales force, their people, their, their sales team, I guess, uh, their products and their services. Of course, that would be a better option and everybody would take it, um, but we don't have that option today. So anyway, that's just a quick opinion. I, I, uh, I fully expect this, this discussion to continue because people who really don't understand how software is built assume that it's this mechanical task where you just churn out code, but it's not, it's not like that at all. The hardest part for software, uh, the hardest part of software engineering is thinking. It's figuring out what should we build, how should we do it, how should we integrate, should we invest in new features or should we fix the, the legacy code that we have. And these kind of challenges are never going to go away. In fact, I really think what we're doing is we're entering in a golden era of software engineering where software engineers are going to have so many powerful tools and we're going to be able to output such amazing products at such an efficient rate because there are so many mechanical and process related things we're not going to have to do anymore. We're going to offload that to AI. Anyway, hope it helps. Have a great day.